Now tonight we're going to be on chapter 2 of the 14th book of Israel, Sin Never Again. This is part 1. Okay, the purple, uh, the nice purple edition right there that we have. So 14th book of Israel, part 1. And we're on chapter 2. The drought is getting people's attention. Is the On page 15, the drought is getting people's attention. The rest of the prophecies are also coming to pass in this generation. And along with that, those prophecies are getting the attention of people as well. But, but specifically, the drought that's taking place. And I know, you know, we've recently got a lot of rain in, in Texas area here. And uh, this sermon was from February the 1st of 2014. Um, but California, you know, California, and Pastor Men- mentions Lake Mead in this sermon. Um, but California is greatly suffering uh, still for, because of the drought uh, and the lack of rain that they're experiencing. And I have a little map here to show you. If we can zoom in on, on this right here. Can you see that map there? Now, it says more than 80% of California is currently in extreme or exceptional drought. And this is the current situation right there. And you see the the red and the dark red um, almost looks purplish. That's the extreme or exceptional drought. And, you know, a lot of things are taking place in California as a result of it. We have certain areas uh, that are sinking at a rate of about two inches per month. Um, and we've seen that on the news here where the person is standing and, you know, the, the, the land used to be up here and now, you know, it's, it's way down there. The water's almost coming across the bridges and so forth. So, you know, the, the, the earth is suffering because the firmament is not able to do its job. And, you know, that's a result of the choices that mankind made. So let's go ahead and begin here on verse 2. If you all remember where I left off last week... Uh, no one remembers? Okay. Well, this thing that was, this thing that was given, the announcement by the great Kohan Michael Sheets Hawkins about the teachers out there. This is really remarkable what is taking place. We've been teaching groups of people for years, and I was told just now that those groups have amounted up to thousands, and those thousands are teaching groups of people. So it's spreading. And pastor's referring to the Skype classes here that are taught on a On a weekly basis, many uh, take place Sabbath morning, but then also throughout the week, there's a lot of these same classes taking place. And the the teachers training teachers. Remember, what what two books did Pastor mention? What what did he refer to this as when he brought this out about teachers training teachers how to teach? Anyone remember? That's right. It was the Deuteronomy and the Timothy. And I'd like to turn over to Deuteronomy. Because Pastor, you know, he, he, he clued us in on this understanding. And this really is our job and the purpose that Yahweh called us here as we see the banner hanging off uh, to my right, uh, straight ahead of you, regarding we will be coming, be coming, come to the house of Yahweh to learn what to teach, then teach what you've learned. Well, in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse, if you look at verse 15, and this is what Moshe did. Remember, Remember, uh, Yahweh kind of scolded Moshe a little bit because he was wearing himself out. He couldn't handle everything, and Yahweh said, you're going to have to get some help. So, in verse 15, So I took the leading men of your tribes, wise and knowledgeable, knowledgeable men, and made them heads over you, captains of thousands, captains of hundreds, captains of fifties, captains of tens, and as tribal officials. And You know, these were the judges, the teachers, counselors, and so forth. And, you know, this pattern then, they allowed, that allowed uh, Moshe to do the job he did, or he had to do, and, you know, the the, the teachers here, the counselors that he set up, they dealt with the people as well. And if you look over to 1 Timothy, uh, because we see the same thing in 1 Timothy, and this is where the Deuteronomy and the Timothy uh, comes from, that pastor referred to, in quite a few sermons, and you know, still makes mention about it. There were songs that came about because of this teaching. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, on page 934, uh, verses 1 through 7, and this is actually qualifications here 
um, for qualifications of elders or priests. And remember, we're all training to become part of this great priestly family. So, you know, this does apply to us, and we need to fit in this description here of uh, being able to teach. And you see that at the end of verse 2. Um, it talks about here uh, of righteous behavior and able to teach. And, you know, and it, and it shows here that in verse 6, can't be a novice, someone new in her experience, or maybe come puffed up with pride or fall into the same condemn, uh, condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a righteous report among all those who are outside. And, you know, and, and give some of these qualifications here. But the, the purpose is that this is the pattern that Yahweh set up. You know, not one person is able to do this great job, and we see it. That's why Yahweh yeah, put together this great team, and we're all part of that team. No matter how big or how small we think our part is, we're all part of the team, and we get credit for being part of the team if we do our job. And in the seventh book of Israel, I want to make one more reference to the Deuteronomy and the Timothy. In the seventh book of Israel, this is um, 1-6-2007, this sermon... And this is chapter 1, verse 29, 7th book of Israel. So if anyone wants to know a little bit more about the Deuteronomy and Timothy, here's a great place to start. But of course, you can look on the Israel Says program, and it'll pull up many references that you can go and look at, you know, this teaching of Deuteronomy and Timothy. So in verse 29, it says, What the apostle Shaul was telling Timothy was, he was telling him this law, and saying it is necessary. This is necessary for the kingdom. And this is the ministry that Yeshua has right now. So he he said, get this, you've got to select capable men, honest, holy men, capable of teaching. Well, the way you find out is to teach them and see if it develops in their minds and if if they will allow it. Anyone can be a teacher if they will allow themselves to be taught and really pay attention and then start to practice this by transferring what they know to other people. You know, and there, that's the pattern right there. You see, anyone is capable of being a teacher. And in the sermon we're going over here this evening, you know, pastor says it. It doesn't matter how, you know, insignificant we may consider ourselves. Yahweh called us here and we can become a teacher. We all have it within ourselves to be a teacher. And then praise Yahweh. That's right. This can be done. Now don't go outside the house of Yahweh. You will become confused and you will turn back to fools again. That's a fact. And that's what Yahweh shows. You've got to stay on the Deuteronomy and completely, totally. If you pass up one law, you bring what we're seeing right here develop in the world today. And what do we see in the world today? Well, we see the results of sin. You know, that's what, the, that's what we see in the world, in the prophecies. So, that's a little on the Deuteronomy and the Timothy and what the uh, pastor was referring to here as, you know, teaching people and then them going out and teaching other groups. Now, let's look at, uh, let's turn the page and look at page 16 at verse 6 here. If you think about Catholicism and Christianity, it's nothing but a bunch of lies, just a group of lies, one lie after another, and falsehoods that are taking place throughout the world. But of course, he's really popular in what he's doing, and and he's referring here to Pope Francis. But of course, he's real popular in what he's doing, but that popularity has nothing to do with the salvation that Yahweh is offering right now. And Pope Francis, you know, some of the latest polls show that Pope Francis, he has like a 66% approval of all Americans. And among, you know, among Catholics, uh, it's 87%, you know, are fans of the Pope. So that's a pretty high popularity rating, um, as Pastor's saying here. But also remember, you know, this had to be this way. Yahweh had to allow this man to, you know, gain that popularity so that it could lead to these other prophecies being fulfilled like the great falling away. You know, that we see as, as you know, that popularity was built up, and then we're going to see, as we're seeing now, that falling away take place. So, he's very popular, and the reason this man is very popular is because he tells the people what they want to hear. He lets them have their lifestyle. 
Whatever their lifestyle is, you know, he says no problem. And, you know, he's, he's opening up the church for anybody um, that wants to believe, anybody that just, you know, has that kindness and love in their heart, as he says, you know, to become part of the church. And so he, that's why he's referred to as the people's pope. You know, he wants to invite everyone in there. But in doing so, Pope Francis has, of course, greatly pushed aside the laws of Yahweh. So this popularity has nothing to do with salvation that Yahweh is offering right now. And you have to read the Holy Scriptures to find out what Yahweh offers, who Yahweh offers salvation to, what they have to do to get it. It's never changed from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation. In fact, the last chapter of Revelation says, Blessed are those who keep His laws, that they may have right to the tree of life. They have no right. You know, there's going to be no entrance into the kingdom, into the tree of life, unless a person keeps the laws of Yahweh. It has to be that the person would keep Yahweh's laws to enter into that tree of life, the kingdom. Well, one of the things of keeping His laws is going to His house. Well, that's the main law, going to His house to learn. And there you see, referring back to the Timothy and the Deuteronomy, we come here to learn. We learn what to teach, so we know what to teach others uh, when it's our turn to teach. And if they go to his house and they keep his appointments, keep their appointments with Yahweh, then Yahweh sets them apart as instruments that he will use because they're coming there to learn. And if they keep coming there to learn, then he will train them for a job, no matter how bright or brilliant or whatever, just so you don't turn. You see, Yahweh's actually making it, he's actually making it fairly easy. We come here and we have to learn, yes, it is hard at times with the, the tests and trials that we go through, but we come, we need to learn, and as pastor says here, don't turn. Just so you endure coming, keep your appointments with Yahweh. And remember how pastor even stressed last Sabbath, don't miss your appointments here with Yahweh on the Sabbath day. Don't miss them. You know, we should get here early, we should be excited, we should be ready to hear the message being taught. We can't be like Adam, where Yahweh had to go searching for the man, saying, you know what, where is he? How come he isn't here uh, for Sabbath services? Why is he always walking in uh, late? You know, why can't he get here on time? Verse 8, what we're seeing right now in the world is a great deal of prophecy taking place. And a lot of that prophecy, the famines, you know, what is famines caused by? It's caused by drought, the lack of rain. And California produces a lot of the food for the United States. You know, so much percentage of, the, of the, the, the nuts and fruits and vegetables all come from California. You know, that's something that's driving the price up. So these are prophecies being fulfilled. They're taking place right now. Now look, uh, look across the page there to verse 12. The prophecies that we're seeing, we're seeing a firmament that's totally out of control now. You see the firmament trying to control itself in order to obey the laws that Yahweh set in motion in the beginning. You know, and that law was for the firmament to send rain in due season. Not 16 inches in a few hours like Texas, like parts of Texas just saw in the last rain that we had. You know, where they had the, the, the mass flooding and, you know, washing trains off the tracks and so forth. So the firmament, you know, it's set in motion by the laws of Yahweh. They're governed by law, and science knows that. I brought it out in the recent magazine called Global Warming. Um, and let's look, at, uh, let's look at verse 13. Now the extremes that we're seeing, the firmament is supposed to be keeping all of this leveled out in a healthy environment for mankind. And what is taking place due to the teachings of the Catholic Church? She is the one that brought about this about, and from her, as Eremia 23 says. And what do we see in Eremia 23, uh, specifically verse 15? And this was the chapter that that pastor spent a great deal of time in last Sabbath, Eremia 23. But you look at verse 15, from the prophets of Jerusalem, what has gone out? Profaneness. Profaneness has gone out into all the land. You know, and that profaneness has led to the, the fornication, adultery, the sodomy, the bestiality, you know, the complete rejection of Yahweh's laws, 
that has ruined this firmament right now. You know, consider even the, the days of Noah. You know, what, is it, what does the scripture say? The thoughts and the intents of man's heart was evil continually. You know, it was evil continually. I mean, I imagine that the firmament had to be fairly messed up at that time as well. So Eremia 23.15, that profaneness has gone out. And this is from the teachings of Pope Francis from the Catholic Church. Let's look at uh, down to verse 14. If you think about it right now, what we're seeing in the droughts, the droughts alone right now, now this is getting people's attention. It should have gotten their attention. But the billions of babies being born with tubers in the brain, one of the articles I noticed this morning that was handed to me, I noticed the diseases that the babies are born with now, one of them is called general confusion. You know, so as Pastor mentions here that the droughts now, you know, finally when they get to their extreme state, they're getting some attention. You know, but it had to get that bad before people say, hey, you know what? We're running out of water here. This is becoming a problem. Now, these are a result of fornication, adultery, bestiality, and the most widespread, the most widespreading action, of course, of the STDs that doesn't stay with the sodomites, but it spreads out to the world. And each action, as one of our deacons brought out, demands a reaction. It causes a reaction. So these reactions, these are the curses that come about from the action of sin. Sin brings about curses. And that's the reaction that pastor's talking about here. And it doesn't just stay with the person that commits that sin. It goes into the land and into the firmament. And uh, someone that may not have even had anything to do with that sin has to suffer. Now we know all mankind in one way or the other, including ourselves, have contributed to the state that the earth is in right now. But that sin has spread throughout the land, okay, and it's bringing about uh, this great defilement. Let's look down to verse 18. General confusion. Now remember, this was one of the birth effects um, that we're seeing take place. The birth effects that you're actually born with, but it doesn't affect you until a certain drama takes place in your life. So there's something else that triggers it. You know, remember, Pastor said this could be, you know, you could have caused a, or committed a sin, and then something years down the road triggers something, and it awakens that curse within the body. And then your brain goes out of control and of course, this causes the person to do a lot of things that he wouldn't do. And remember, uh, we just saw uh, where this woman, a uh, 25-year-old, slammed into uh, this Oklahoma State University, some type of parade or homecoming that they were having. Remember, she slammed her car in there into the group of people and killed four. And her lawyer said, you know, she wasn't under the influence of anything. She's just mentally ill. You know, and that's what we're seeing a lot in the news that this is bringing about the confusion of the mind. There's a lot of that mentally, uh, mental illness, the confusion taking place. And it just needs to be awakened there. You know, the, the, the sins, they place these things within the bodies of mankind. And a certain thing, as Pastor mentions here, takes place in that person's life. And boom, you know, they snap. And that's what we see on a daily basis, you know, with the shootings um, with these in, in, like incidences here uh, where these things take place and you know it's a, it's a mental illness it's confusion well, let's turn the page and let's look at verse 23 verse 23 but they're in trouble big trouble you know and people now as pastor said they're they're being awakened they're finally it's finally getting their attention i don't like the trouble that they're having to suffer but Yahweh has told them, if you do these things, what will occur? Now with us, we know that Yahweh has called us out of this world, and we can see that we're building a kingdom, that there, that there is going to be a kingdom that will be in unity with Yahweh. And, you know, the, we'll see the, the, the priest that's coming after me, 
um, at the end of this sermon here. Pastor talks about this unity and how important it is. You know, and he mentions it's one of the last things that we've got to do. You know, we've got to come into unity. You know, and interestingly enough, that's been the focus here, uh, right here in this last period, uh, to come into unity, to be in complete agreement with the one sent, praise Yahweh, with the teachings, you know, and, 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 and everything that pastor's been uh, telling us leading up to this point, we've got to be in unity with Yahweh. That will not be bringing the suffering on the world. We are pretty safe here, and referring to the house of Yahweh, and of course America has been kept that way for years. If you were in some of these places that they're having wars right now, which there are several, the United States hasn't accomplished any goals other than uh, get our oil back and the sale of our oil back to us. We haven't brought peace to these countries like Afghanistan and Iraq and Syria. In fact, those places are so far uh, so much worse off right now. You know, the refugee crisis is out of control. Um, quarter of a million people now in Syria. The death toll, you know, their city is pretty much, you know, ruined. And we haven't accomplished anything. You know, war does not bring about a solution. It just doesn't. But, you know, as Pastor mentioned, uh, we feel pretty safe here. You know, and Yahweh has kept the United States that way. It would be a whole lot different if there was fighting going on right here uh, uh, on this soil. You know, we would see what it's like, what those people are going through on a daily basis. Uh, constantly, like the, like the one woman said, you know, you've got to look over your shoulder all the time. You know, I know Abilene gets pretty bad and you still have to do that at times, but it could be a whole lot worse. You know, but Yahweh has allowed us to be in a safe place so the work could continue, so the message could get out. You know, it was for the purpose of His house growing, teaching all of us. You know, Yahweh's done this for us uh, so that we can become the great teachers that He's calling us to be. Let's look at uh, verse 31 here. Verse 31 on page 19. But I want you to turn to Zephania, Zephania chapter 1, because we're in this time period right here, and it's got their attention here just a little bit. It's going to get their attention even more, big time, because Yeshua showed that men's hearts are going to be failing them from what they're seeing coming. Okay, And what's getting their attention? Well, you know, the famine is starting to get their attention now. The diseases, uh, the drought, you know, the weather, as they say these are the you know, the biggest storms ever, uh, you know, the, the, the greatest or the largest hurricane, you know, that they've ever had. And, um, you know, so everything is starting now to, to grab their attention. If you look at verse 14, Zephaniah chapter 1, it talks about the great day of Yahweh near. Now, this is the day, of course, the great day of Yahweh is the finishing of his work, where he proves to mankind, as he's doing now, right now, what your sins are bringing. Who would have thought that fornication or adultery or bestiality or sodomy or those four together would bring droughts, would bring famine to the earth, bring confusion, so much confusion that even the leaders can't make sensible decisions. You know, the way Yahweh is doing it, not a single person. You know, and this is what Pastor said years and years ago. The way Yahweh is doing this, every single person on the face of the earth is going to see what rejecting Yahweh's laws has brought, you know, what it has caused. And, you know, the, Yahweh's plan is perfect. You know, do we want to see the suffering that mankind is going to have to go through? No, I don't think anyone here wants, to, wants another person to have to suffer. However, it's very needful that mankind go through that suffering and realize that is because of the choice they made to break Yahweh's law. If they didn't, it, it, it wouldn't have the effect. It wouldn't have the effect that it needs to in their hearts and minds and the humbling for them to say, okay, you're right, you know, I'm ready to be taught now. So the way Yahweh's doing it, it's a perfect plan. They can't even solve a problem that's going on in the tiny, tiny land of Israel, but they want to solve the problems of the world. It's like the Superman, you know, super. Well, what's he doing besides putting on a show in his Santa Claus suit? And that's referring to uh, Pope Francis. Well, the great day of Yahweh is the finishing, of course, of his work, where the kingdoms, the kingdoms will actually be given to you. After they destroy the works, after they destroy the works of their own hands, they destroy what they have set up, 
with their sins, then the kingdoms are going to be taken from them and given to you. Now here's something that uh, all of us should rejoice at. And at that time, you will have your subconscious minds. You know, I don't know about you, but boy, that's going to be great. Praise Father Yahweh for that. Subconscious minds. And of course, if you know anything about the studies, and I'll just paraphrase here a little bit as we uh, close, you know, the pastor says most people only use 1% of their brain. You know, and some of the leaders or those really, you know, that I guess use the brain a lot, maybe up to 10, 15%. But the use of that subconscious mind is just going to be completely awesome. But if you think about it, Yahweh gave you your mind, which could be super. The Pope doesn't have it. He's training and making people, he's trained in making people like him. That's all he's got is the popularity. It has nothing to do with righteousness. It just makes people think that everything's going to be all right now. You know, and it's just setting them up to say, you know what? Well, we've inherited nothing but lies from this guy. So in verse 38, pastor says, Yahweh in showing Eob, if you can remember that he said, he said, Eob, just do, just do what I tell you. There's no way you're strong enough, Eob. You know, and Eob, Yahweh showed him that, Eob, you can't turn this beast around. You know, you can't turn Leviathan around, this whole system. You know, that's what the Leviathan is, this wicked system of unrighteousness, of rejecting Yahweh's laws. But Yahweh can. You know, that's what he asked Eob. Are you strong enough? Can you put a fish hook in his mouth, turn him around? No way. I'm the only one who can do that, Yahweh said. So he, Yahweh, plans to turn Leviathan around. And of course, the first thing to do is allow mankind to kill himself, destroy himself, consume himself with his sins, and then we'll mop up the pieces and we'll have this forever, forever history to show. We'll have it in our lessons to show throughout the universe, to the beings throughout the universe. We've got a job ahead of us, a never-ending job ahead of us. You know, but it won't be with the drudgery and the pain and the suffering that we have right now at this time. That's for a purpose, too, to prove to Yahweh that, you know what, Yahweh, nothing else matters but to work. And I'm going to stay here. I'm going to endure. I'm going to do my part. And, yeah, even with the pain, uh, I'm going to do it. And the tree is growing, you know. This is not all of it. This is not all of our helpers right here. And that's the reason I was so tickled to see how it's snowballing now. And we've got not only Nora, the Samaritan gossiper, but we've got, all, we've got these gossipers all throughout the land now saying, hey, Yahweh is the way to go. May Yahweh bless your understanding at this time. I have the great opportunity. Uh, turn it over to one of Yahweh's great priests, Great Kahan, Betsayil Hawkins. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. You may be seated. And continuing with our lesson tonight, if you have your book of Yahweh with you, I'd like to, uh, we're going to start off here in a few minutes in Deuteronomy 28. Someone asked me this evening if I were to summarize, uh, you know, what the main point was. And I found this passage in the 12th book of Israel, chapter 25, verse 110. And this pretty well, I thought, sums up a lot of what we're going to cover here this, in the second part this evening. We're living in a confused world. It's totally deceived, as Yahweh says. There's no, there is a way out. There is a cure. Yes, we have cures for all diseases, and I don't mean drugs or supplements. I mean total cures for the total body, the total mind, just as the Apostle Shaul was, just as this was removed from his mind by Yahweh. He can do it for anyone who will repent and be converted. That's being converted to Yahweh, which is coming into 100% full unity with Yahweh. Well, here on page 21, verse 46, I want you to think about this here for a moment. The human body is warm, about 98 and a half degrees. That's a hot day in Texas. 
and it has systems to keep the microorganisms alive, working and reproducing continuously until something corrupts it. Verse 46, it's hard to get people to understand that our sins and the things we have created in our bodies, the STDs, are destroying us. Like I just said, it's a perfect environment to support this life, and if it gets corrupted, it'll corrupt us and destroy us. Now we can see that they're, do- they're going into the plants, and we can see that they're going into the soil. We can see that. We can see they're affecting the trees. And keep in mind Isaiah 24, verse 5, where it talks about how the inhabitants of the earth have polluted the earth. It gets into the grass, the animals that we raise for food. It's affecting all of this. And now to add to that, we've got drought because it's affecting the firmament as well. And we're seeing the genetic modifications and the mutations occurring to the microbes in the atmosphere, and they're not able to do their jobs correctly because they're, they've been corrupted and diminished. <clears throat> now, if you look with me at Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 through 3, I want to look at a few things here in Deuteronomy. And it will be if you will listen diligently to the voice of Yahweh your Father by observing and doing all this, his laws which I command you this day that Yahweh your Father will set you high above all the nations in the earth as kings and priests and all these blessings will come upon you and accompany you because... You obey Yahweh your Father. Blessed will you be in the city, and blessed will you be in the country. Verse 4. Blessed will be the fruit of your body. These are your children, your offspring. Childhood cancers. This is from the American Cancer Society. If you look at the word society... It means a society can consist of like-minded people governed by their own norms, what they consider to be normal, and values. Keep in mind 1 Samuel 8. Remember the way that they have chosen? Societies are characterized by patterns of relationships between individuals who share a distinctive culture and institutions. A church is an institution. Remember in Revelation 12, 9, it says Satan deceives the whole world. They're all a part of this. All the societies of the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 4. And verse 25. When you beget children and grandchildren and have grown old in the land and if you become corrupt and make any kind of God doing evil inside of Yahweh your father and provoking him, it's it's not provoking him, but it's certainly displeasing to Yahweh, then I call heaven and earth, excuse me, that will stop there for a moment, Yeremia 7.19 says, Is it I whom they provoke to anger, says Yahweh, or is it themselves whom they harm to their own shame? And of course we know that it is. Now, verse 26, Then I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you will soon utterly perish from the land which you are crossing into the yard and to possess. <clears throat> For the same reason that we will fail today if we do not Come into unity with Yahweh's plan. You will not prolong your days. No one will. No one would if they turn to evil. But you will be utterly destroyed. Verse 39. 
Therefore, know this day and acknowledge it in your heart that Yahweh himself is the Father in heaven, not lards, not globs, or any other such foolishness, but Yahweh himself. You know the one who the Catholic Church took his name out of the books and out of their psalms and falsified it? Yahweh himself is the Father in heaven above and on the earth beneath, or yes, there is no other, none beside Yahweh. Verse 40, you shall therefore keep his statutes and his laws, which I command you this day, that it may go well with you and with your children after you, that, and that you may prolong your days in the land which Yahweh your father is giving you for all time. So Yahweh gives us hope and gives us uh, knowledge that it, we don't have to utterly be destroyed. Now, back to Deuteronomy 28 to support this point. Verse 27. Yahweh will allow you to be afflicted with the disease of, of Egypt with tumors. Childhood cancer remains the leading cause of death by disease among children in the United States. Every day, 43 children are diagnosed with cancer and the average age of diagnosis is six. Cancer affects all ethnic, gender, and socioeconomic groups, and more than 40,000 children undergo treatment for cancer each year. The number of childhood cancer diagnoses per year total is 15,700. And Two of the most uh, common forms of cancers is the cancer of the blood, which is leukemia, 21%, and brain tumors at 19%. Brain tumors. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 28, 28 says, Yahweh will allow you to be afflicted with madness, spiritual blindness, and confusion of mind. Now, autism is something we hear about frequently. And it has a broad definition, but in general, it affects the development of the brain, which we use to learn and to interact with others and to make decisions and to form actions. A medical diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder is most frequently made by a member of the American Psychological Association. So we see here it has an, it's an effect on the brain and it falls under the area of psychology. Prevalence of autism in the United States is an estimated one in 68 births. One out of every 68 children born, and there's more than three and a half million Americans living with this autism spectrum disorder. And it's increased by 119% over that in the last 10 years. So, is just is this become the new norm? the new normal? Is this a problem? Is this a trend that we should want to reverse or stop? Let's look at the cost of this to society. Autism services cost U.S. citizens 236 to 262 billion, with a B, billion dollars annually each year. Are these the blessings we desire for our people? Could we do better? Deuteronomy 28, 11 and 12. <clears throat> Yahweh vowed on oath. This is a promise. Yahweh vowed on oath to your forefathers to give you. Yahweh will open the heavens the storehouse of his bountiful treasure to send rain upon your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but you will borrow from none. Does anyone else give you this promise? Anyone out there promoting holidays? Verse 
Verse 47 in the book of Israel. The bacteria that we know, microorganisms that we know, that cause the raindrops to form and fall to the earth are being affected by the STDs. And it seems like they're overwhelming now in these last days and everyone is sinning. It's overwhelming the atmosphere to where it can't do its job and they're standing in their dry lakes looking up and wondering when is it going to rain? When is it going to rain? Deuteronomy 28, 13. Well, I think I got out of place there, but it was in verse 12. Rain in due season. Yahweh will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bountiful treasure... Yahweh will, verse 13, Yahweh will make you the head and not the tail, and you'll, you will be at the top only and never at the bottom. You, if you will pay attention to the laws of Yahweh your Father, which I command you this day, and are then careful to observe and to do them. Well, when are you going to stop sinning and causing the droughts? Pastor says. We're in the last generation and we can see all these things as Matthew 24, 33 and 34 say. We can see all these things and Yahshua said, when you see these things, know the end is near. We're in the last part of the last generation given to mankind when the sins are at his peak and they're affecting everything around us. I heard this week that nearly 60% of adults in the United States Nearly three in five are in prescript, some kind of prescription drug. I know you feel safe right here, and I was thinking it's like that being in that fiery furnace. You know, when the prophets of Yahweh walked around in the fire? And you know, <laughs> their minds had to be right to pull that off. If they had one moment of doubt, they would have been consumed. And that's where we're at today, you know, so this fire, this consuming fire all around us, and Yahweh has given us this space to repent. I would that you'd start remembering and don't forget the misery that's going on in the world. Men will bring such distress upon themselves, they'll walk like blind men. And the pastor refers back to this uh, example of where the, the artist drew this picture of the Pope like Superman. And um, we'll get back to that in a moment. But this confusion is coming because they have sinned. And their sins is, is what has brought this. And remember, who deals in the business of sin? It's the churches, it's the religious leaders. They're the one that teach you about it and tell you what it is or what it's not, that's their job, but they don't all fulfill it faithfully. I was reading an article last week, Pastor goes on to say in verse 53, the Pope says, uh, the Pope in the days of certain gods, he wears certain hats. And uh, like this one we saw, heard of last week about this uh, hat that represents the rings of Saturn and uh, plays into their forms of God worship. But this, uh, these actions of these religious leaders leading the people astray with these uh, false teachings. And remember, when they wear a hat, you know, that's showing that you're representative of something, that you have a rank or, or there's an order. But they're going to take over and reestablish, they think, the so-called Holy Roman Empire. That picture of the Pope, he was carrying a satchel in his arm, and on the top of on that satchel it said values in in Italian. And um, I'm probably gonna run myself out of time again like I usually do. In the Peaceful Solution character lesson on page six, 
we read about values. Values are what you believe in or feel strongly about, and they play a key role in developing your character. Family members, teachers, preachers, all of these uh, can help shape your character by sharing their values with you. And what we value can also be affected by our culture and religion. Got that? That's what we're talking about here, a religion. And this is something they value, that Holy Roman Empire where they were the top. They were in charge. They called the shots to where they have full say and the people either fall in line or they'll kill them, one of the two. But all who fail to keep Yahweh's laws, those will be consumed, Yahweh says. Because Yahweh is the life giver. He's the one from whom life comes. Let's continue here. Pastor had brought a sermon a while back about the need to start watching the sky. In, ver- in Luke twenty one twenty five, he talks about the signs in the sun and the signs in the moon. And the stars and on the earth and distress among nations and in their perplexities at the roaring and surging of the sea. And this word sea here is important. If we look at Revelation 17, where Yahshua, the way he taught uh, to show us things, let's see. Yes, we'll get to that. The Pope puts a lot of things in people's minds right now, and this is psychology, and it's the very powerful tool of the Catholic Church is using to, to maneuver people and to make them do things they wouldn't ordinarily do, even erratic things, putting these influences in their mind and teaching them to value things that have nothing to do with salvation. On the other hand, Yahshua uses inspiration, and when we study properly, we receive that inspiration uh, as well. The Pope, he uses psychology. As Daniel 8.23 says, he's skilled in trickery and deception. But here a while back, I brought you what he was talking about, about listening to this whisper in your mind or a little thought in your mind. You can't listen to voices in your head, you know. With the confusion that's going on in the world today, that voice in your head will have you doing cuckoo things and will get you into trouble. Now, in Luke 21:25, in the word see, S-E-A, now over in Revelation 17, verse 15, he said to me, the waters which you saw where the great whore sits, and the word sits, of course, that's um, a, a position of authority there, or a, a place uh, from which judgment goes forth. But what occurred was they left Yahweh and they started sinning. And that's what God worship is, is leaving Yahweh and turning to sin. Any sin is God worship. So don't make yourselves into the image of Yahweh by following sin. No, no matter how small it is, sin cuts us off from Yahweh and it classifies us as belonging to Satan. So the word sits is judges. And the same word is used to describe Yahshua's position today where he says he sits at the side of Yahweh, the right hand of Yahweh, judging. And who is he judging? Well, he's high priest over the house of Yahweh, so he's not judging the world. He's judging us. Now, the universe at this time is filled with sin because... Uh, sin has been allowed to, to go run its course. And Pastor encourages us that Yahweh has a plan from the beginning to turn the gods around. And we're a part of that plan. And we're at a finishing touch of the kingdom that he's making. The finishing touch is bringing you to unity with him. So you don't have to do anything else. Just stay in the house Keep coming to his house to keep your appointments with Yahweh 
And he will keep putting this training, this inspiration in your mind to where he'll bring you totally to perfection. It is total per- perfection, perfect unity with Yahweh. So where this whore sits, where she sits judging in Rome or from Rome, you know, the Pope is just a showpiece there. It's the Vatican is judging the world and they're telling the world what to do or what's permissible or what's acceptable, what you can get away with. But try to enforce some of the laws of Yahweh, like to keep your uh, selves modest and, and, and so forth that they, they'll turn or use the name of Yahweh, they'll persecute you and try to shut you down and discourage you. Verse 69, the Pope himself admitted that what they're calling Jews is actually Catholics. He said, our forefathers, and this is in a statement that the Pope made, he said, our forefathers, our forefathers, speaking of himself and his forefathers, who took the name, the name Yahweh, out of the Holy Scriptures, talking about the elders of Israel who became Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians, who took the names Yahweh and Yahshua out of the Scriptures, he said, in respect to our fathers. Yahshua said, you admit that they are your teachers when you say this. And you say, if it had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have done this. That's in Matthew 24, verse 30. And Yahshua said, you're lying. They certainly would have. In fact, they did. When, it, when, the elders of, when the elders that left Samuel, back in uh, 1 Samuel 8, Yahweh said, they have turned to the worship of God's They want to leave me so they can worship gods or serve the way of the gods, the way that was pleasant and pleasing, you know, in their minds. But if you remember Pastor's instruction back here in verse 64, you know, keep yourselves straight. Keep yourselves, think in advance, set your mind in advance. Keep yourselves coming into unity with Yahweh. And the peaceful solution is very instrumental in helping us do this. Continuing Luke 21, 25, speaking of the distress among the nations in their perplexity at the roaring and surging of the sea. Just look at the news right now, the, seeing the, this reminds you of the refugees surging out of their nations, out of their homelands. Men's courage failing them for fear because of the dread of those things which are coming on the earth. Because of these droughts uh, or the excesses, you know some of the worst famines in history was because uh, right at the time when the crops were in the field, they had her. Uh, huge, uh, just overwhelming rains. And the crops rotted in the fields and they had famine. So don't let the recent rains deceive you into thinking that these droughts don't count anymore. It's all a part of this destruction that's coming upon us. And it's not just coming, it's here. And it's global. Revelation 6, verse 1, here we see the quartet. Now, the quartet came down from these four beasts, but these four beasts were never destroyed. They just took a lesser seat while the one with the Roman Catholic Church moved forward. So the four beasts, there are governments or ruling systems that came forth weaker but still uh, existing. And now this one actually overpowered the nations and brought Christianity into existence by fear or by the fear of being killed. So by this fear and by crusades and inquisitions, they had their people turning everyone in and and, um, turning them into the authorities and offering them, who offered them wealth, 
And, you know, saying, come on and join us is like we see today. Join with us. Be one of us. And we'll give you our business. You know, we'll make you uh, wealthy. And from this, we saw the persecutions of anyone who tried to uphold any form of holiness in any regard, tried to follow any part of the scriptures they found. If they had a a book that they kept secretly in the family or uh, they had a scripture written on something, a family heirloom or something, and they tried to hold to that, when they were found out, they were persecuted for it and, and told, come and join with us. Your life will be easy. You know, you'll have a full and and enjoyable, full and prosperous life they try to entice you with. But notice, no one but Yahweh has vowed on oath, and no one but Yahweh can deliver on on these wonderful promises that he's uh, prepared for us if we'll endure. In Revelation 11, it shows... I will give authority to my two witnesses. Isaiah 44 says, I will let them foretell these events. So the Lamb, being the high priest over the house of Yahweh, as Hebrews 10 shows, opens the seal where we can see in the house of Yahweh, where we can see that this is taking place and what's going to take place. We can see all this laid out before us. So our minds can be prepared and trained to recognize what is taking place. And it's a great blessing to us to have ease of mind, you know, and be prepared in advance, knowing what's coming on to this, this earth so that we can get our minds trained and get our focus on coming into this unity with Yahweh and training our characters. Now, if you come into unity with Yahweh, then you become a part of this permanent kingdom that will prevent this struggling, this destruction that we see taking place right now. The knowledge that Daniel said would be increased came in 1934 in it, when it started at the time of pastor's birth, and that knowledge has brought about what we see here today. It's also brought the kingdom of Yahweh about. So these two kingdoms rising up, the kingdom leading to destruction and his kingdom leading to salvation, what we see here today that we're a part of. So remain in this, because he who endures, this is Yahweh's promise, he who endures, I will make a pillar in my house, Yahshua said. Praise Yahweh. Pastor loves each and every one of you, and may Yahweh bless your understanding.